Welcome everyone. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Caroline Coles and I'm the Senior Director of Health and Wellness at the Marlene Meyerson JCC Manhattan. Today on our Positive Psychology Hour, a series that we do in partnership with Whole Being Institute, I have the pleasure of introducing and having Yaro back in the house to talk about gratitude. Of course, we had her last year at this time. It's so appropriate. It's uh, Thanksgiving. And she's going to talk about how to boost your gratitude superpower. I am so excited about that. Um, we're preparing for Thanksgiving with happiness trainer, Yaro Arista Gueta. <laughs> Close? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yaro will guide us to understand gratitude more deeply and how we can boost this strength to transform the way we experience the ups and the downs of life. Boosting our gratitude superpower shifts attention to all that is positive, filling us with the energy needed to move forward and accomplish our goals so that we can learn how to turn on the switch of gratitude to become more resilient and willing to engage in activities that make us feel good, creating an upward spiral of happiness. Yara will share her personal story of how gratitude helped her overcome a major change in her life when she was laid off during the pandemic. She'll share some resources that we can all use to further develop gratitude, improving our relationships, our physical and mental health, and enhancing overall life satisfaction. She holds a master's degree in international business from Regis University and certificates in positive psychology from Whole Being Institute and Happiness Studies Academy and is currently in training at Google. She has led over 400 hours of positive psychology group coaching in the corporate environment. She's the founder of Humanly Positive. Dot com, created around her vision of facilitating happiness and a ripple effect of well-being in the community. I welcome to the call, Yaro. I cannot wait mm -hmm. to uh, hear what you have yeah. to say about gratitude today. And one of the things that I always took with me with, from last time was that you said, gratitude gives us energy. And yes. when we have energy, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you for having me here again. I'm very happy to be uh, sharing um, one of my passions, that is gratitude. And definitely you are right. I mean, um, when you think about it, when you, when you have energy, when you feel enthusiastic and motivated, um, you can accomplish a lot, even if you don't have that much time, right? You have that uh, motivation to take action and to move and, and also um, that energy or that positivity widens your perspective and you identify resources and things that are related to whatever you're working on. So when you don't have that energy, of course, you, you don't feel compelled to take action or um, you are definitely distracted. You cannot see the, the wider picture. And, and that's what I found in gratitude. I found that it's a positive emotion that like the foundation for you to feel uh, all the spectrum of positive emotions and, and keep that energy level up, which is what we all need to become resilient, you know, and, and be able to tackle the up and downs of life, as I, as I mentioned. <laughs> so very happy to be here. I'm gonna share my presentation. Let me share a screen and talk to you a little about gratitude and how we can all boost this gratitude power that we all have. Let me go here, present mode. Let me see if you can see the screen and the presentation mode. Yes, we can see it. Excellent. Okay, welcome to this uh, Positive Psychology Hour. Um, this is uh, Boost Your Gratitude Superpower. So I'm going to uh, ask Caroline to help me with the chat since I won't uh, be able to see it. If you have any Absolutely. questions, definitely you can use the chat. So first of all, I would like to ask you, what is gratitude for you? You can use the chat to comment. Okay. Um, gratitude can, can be shown um, in many 
situations, right? We can experience gratitude in, in many instances. It could be only by, you know, some of us that have a routine just by waking up in the morning, or we feel grateful that we made it again to another day, right? Gratitude can be as well when you are receiving a favor from a, a person, uh, you immediately, you know, show that gratitude of that person, you know, helping you or supporting you. Okay. So, Carolyn, can you help comments. me? Yeah. Uh, comments? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, we have good health, good friends, and thankful to be here. Mm -hmm. Appreciation and caring. It's a mindset. Look for the good. Having close friends and getting to see them in person. Excellent. Yeah, definitely. Gratitude is all of that. So gratitude is an attitude or disposition to recognize and appreciate the positive aspects of our lives. And the good news is that this attitude is trainable. You can practice that. You can develop these strengths. And I would remember uh, one of my teachers, Maria Sierra, she always says, that is like uh, looking for the goal in our days. So gratitude um, makes you to have that disposition to recognize and savor all the things that are happening around you that, that are positive, you know, that, you, that you enjoy. And gratitude as well belongs to the virtue of transcendence. You know, for those that know character and strength, right? Transcending is the strength of a spirit. That's why gratitude is so related to resilience. We become stronger. Is that when we feel positivity and we practice gratitude, it's like we have like a like a vest that is uh, filling up with with cushions. But that time that we face a difficult situation, we are able to bounce back, right, and even grow from it and and grow from the experience, learn from the experience. And gratitude is one of the most powerful positive emotions ever studied. If you, if you search about gratitude online, you can see that there's a whole department, for example, in the University of California, that they uh, continuously are making uh, research and studies on gratitude. And they even brought a book, a recent book that is called The Gratitude Project, that I, I have it there in, in my resources and I will show you at the end. But gratitude, is being studied because they find, uh, research has found that when you uh, develop your gratitude uh, superpower, you are more prone to engage in activities that feel good. And of course, that also contributes to maintaining that energy level up, which is what we need to tackle the adversities and the setbacks in life. That's why gratitude is so, so important. So what happens when we feel gratitude is not only that we feel it, it feels good in our body, right? And we feel that warmth in our heart or, or that warmth in our faces and, and, and extremities, but it's also something happening inside of us chemically. When we uh, feel gratitude, our brain is creating those neural pathways that, that will help us shift the attention away from toxic emotions. So it's, it will be harder for us to ruminate about the negative if we are always looking for the goal, if we are always looking for uh, experiences that feel good and, and we enjoy. So the more we do it, those neural, neural pathways will become stronger and stronger until they are a habit, right? And it will be definitely um, something very easy for us to identify. Um, as well, when we practice gratitude, our brain is releasing um, the feel-good chemicals like serotonin and dopamine. And, and these encourage our brain to continue seeking for more experiences that feel like that. Also, when we feel gratitude, it's like we have a change in our perception. Okay? We, we tend to see the big picture, and that helps us get through the adversity. Because we, even when we have obstacles in the process, we have in mind that, you know, big picture that we want to accomplish. And we all tend to see those obstacles as just a step in the process. When we keep our focus on the, we're envisioning, right? That big picture that feels good, that is what we like to accomplish. 
Also gratitude help us make better decisions, right? Because not only you have that wider perception that, that allows you to see the resources that you have in place and, and maybe um, be, be able to look for solutions more easily, but also you tend to persevere more. And why we persevere more? Because we have the energy. That energy is what makes us move, is what makes us take action. And definitely we stay optim optimistic uh, despite the, the obstacles. Also, when we feel gratitude, we tend to appreciate life more because we are uh, changing our focus to from, from just looking at uh, you know, things that go wrong to also look at things that go right. It doesn't mean that we're gonna reject or ignore what is not going well, but it means that we're also gonna pay attention to the things that go well. And, and when that happens, you tend to appreciate your life, you tend to become grateful about yourself, and you're more prone to take care of yourself, uh, making good decisions about your health, your, your, your eating behaviors, for example. And grateful people as well, um, even though they're going through difficulties, they are able to tap into uh, kindness and, and be able to show empathy in difficult situations because they understand that, you know, ups and downs in life happen to all of us. And um, it's part of the process or of the, it's part of being human. And when you feel uh, gratitude, you are more prone to help others, to show kindness, to show empathy. I, I love this quote from Dr. Barbara Fredrickson. Um, as we experience positive emotions, such as gratitude, our awareness broadens and our creativity and problem solving capacities blossom. And we become more effective in whatever we choose to do. So a gratitude opens that awareness raises that energy, we can tackle into problem solving and definitely persevere until we can accomplish our goals. However, it's very important to know that there are barriers to gratitude. And these barriers to gratitude sometimes are unconscious. Uh, sometimes there are patterns uh, inside of us that are, you know, a habit that we maybe learn from um, from our culture, uh, from co-workers, from experiences that happened in the past. And we tend to be repetitive about those. And, and that can also be a barrier to gratitude. So I'm going to mention this so that you can pay attention <clears throat> whenever you fall into these barriers. Because we can identify these type of barriers and, and take action, intervene, and, and you know, change the switch. One of them is a negativity bias, right? You, we all have um, known that we have that tendency in our brain to notice the, the negative of their threats uh, because our ancestors were, you know, under survival and they had to, you know, be our brain had to, in order to survive, had to look for, okay, what's out there that is, can harm me or can be a threat to, to my life. So that is really ingrained and engraved into, into our brain. So we can um, you know, analyze if we have those patterns of negative thoughts or emotions that might block you from tapping into gratitude. Uh, is your explanatory style, for example, about, about complaining or ruminating on the same regret over and over? So we can, uh, when we pay attention, and, and we uh, found ourselves doing this, we can interrupt, intervene, and maybe switch to um, something that can boost our gratitude. Uh, explanatory style, this is something that is mentioned in, in the book by Dr. Martin Seligman, Learn Optimism. He says that when we have an, op an explanatory style that is focused on the negative, it's very hard for the person to be optimistic, of course. When you are optimistic, you expect the best. And when your explanatory style is about everything wrong that happened in the day is, you know, that affects your energy, that affects also your focus. You're gonna be looking more of that. 
And of course, it's gonna be very difficult for you to feel gratitude. Media influences, that's another barrier. For example, have you um, have any fixation on things that will one day fix your life? Or any judgments about what's wrong with your life today? Sometimes, sometimes when we see in the media, you know, people having success, like uh, traveling around the world or having the best things or the bigger houses or the fancier cars, we feel like, you know, we would like to be like them and, and we feel like that would my, maybe solve my life today. So my, the invitation here is not saying that that is wrong, it's just looking in, inside yourself and, and, and feel what's really success for you. Because success is not only having material things, success can be all, also um, feeling good about your life, appreciating the person that you are focusing on strengths and talents. So it's, it's to have that analysis, right? And, and not let you carry yourself away by whatever uh, success uh, pattern is shown in the media. Also lack and wanting are, are barriers to gratitude. We all desire things in life, but do any of your desires cause you to feel unhappy with your life as it is? Are you convinced that a future accomplishment will fill a void do you see in your life? So pay attention to that. Sometimes when we focus on what we don't have, that brings our energy down. It, it makes us uh, feel frustrated. It makes us feel anxious because we don't have that, that we need to maybe um, accomplish a next step. So that's a barrier to feel gratitude. When you switch that to, um, be grateful for what you have accomplished so far, for example, and take a, a balance or an account of all the blessings that you have, then you, you focus on that, your, your perception widens, and maybe you get whatever you need um, in the future. So when you focus on lack and wanting, is you are narrowing your focus. And of course, that doesn't make you feel good at all. We had a quick question from Nancy. Yes. Where do I put my COVID life in my negative thoughts? Where do I put? My COVID life in my negative thoughts. Okay. That means if you got COVID, for example, and was able to overcome it, and you are constantly thinking about that, is, is, that would be the question. Because, I mean, negative um, Nancy, can happen. you clarify just for that for us? Um, do you just mean that happen, your right? life has changed because of COVID? Because, you know, in a way, Yara, you're going to talk about that, right? Yes, I'm going to talk about that in the story. But yeah, definitely bad things happen to all of us, right? It could be COVID. It could be, you know, uh, a diagnostic. It could be a loss of a, a job, like what happens in my case. I mean, many things. But when you tap into gratitude, it's not that you're gonna be feel grateful for that bad thing that happened, but when you tap into gratitude is that, okay, after, you know, first is accepting that that situation happened, but then how are you going to solve it from a place of well-being, from a place that, that you can overcome the situation quickly and maybe there's something best, better for you in a store on your next uh, experience. So that's what, you know, gratitude is all about. And, and I will talk about that uh, story in a, in a second. So another barrier to gratitude is comparison and envy. And that goes against to the social media. Sometimes um, you have to analyze, is there a specific people that triggers this tendency? Or does it stimulate dissatisfaction with a particular part of your life when we're comparing um, it's, it's not good for us, right? Because um, I would say that comparison, you're, you're, you're comparing and you're having a perception that that might be better than what you have today, but you never know. I mean, in social media or whatever you see, uh, people show only the beautiful, right? Or when they're having fun or when they're happier, but you never know, you know, if that's really the answer. Every person has their own needs. And, and reasons. 
So does your use of social media fuel these emotional patterns? So I had a case with my daughter that she was uh, looking in social media and, and comparing like, oh, they have a better clothing that I, that I am, or I look prettier than I am, or they have other stuff that I don't have. And she was feeling sad and frustrated because of that. Um, and then, you know, we analyzed together and we said, well, they're happy for having those things, but you also have these things in, in, in return that you can also appreciate and, and feel that way. You know? you, it's, it's a way of uh, not giving that much um, weight on other people's um, uh, showing of success and also focus on your own success. Right? And every uh, and understanding that every person has a journey, right? It could be successful sooner or later, or success can be measured in many ways, not only material. Also, expectations. Are there ways you could challenge your expectations? Could this help you find satisfaction in your life as it is today, irrespective of how you once thought it was supposed to, to unfold? Sometimes we, we have plans, right? And it's normal to to have um, planning for the future and expect, you know, to have a success and, and expect, you know, that you try and that, that project, you know, is accepted or your business, you know, ramps up, ramps up and, and be successful. But sometimes when you are too tied to expectation that you want to things that happen exactly as you want, that's very difficult, right, to, to accomplish. So, is to gratitude makes you be more flexible, even though that you have the expectations and you plan for the future, you also be flexible to the things uh, as they unfold. Uh, because sometimes it doesn't mean that you have to be this, the way you want to structure in the steps you want to structure. It could be that something happens in the middle that, that give you a lesson or something happens that makes you reconsider um, your investment or you know, things happen and you need to evaluate, you know, why is this showing me what, what I'm learning from this? Instead of just, you know, being frustrated by things not, not happening exactly the way you, you want. Another barrier to gratitude is the autopilot. And we usually are in autopilot when we're very busy. That happens to me as well. We are, you know, busy, rushed. Uh, so we are mindful of the everyday blessings in our life. In the case of this uh, picture here showing she's eating over work life, she's eating her lunch and working at the same time. So if something good happened, like her son comes and, and brings us some, some good news, she might not pay attention and, and, and don't appreciate and celebrate that. So is to gratitude also help us uh, be more mindful of, of our days. Because we're always looking for, okay, what happened here, pay attention and, and try to, you know, savor whatever is good, you know, because not always uh, we're going to have good things in our days, right? So we're going to notice what goes wrong, but as well, let's notice what goes right and, and try to savor that so that we can keep our energy up. So you have to, you know, try to interrupt that autopilot, become more, more mindful of your moments and, and see if there are particular routines um, or times of the day when you sleep into this pattern. Huh? Try to interrupt that and intervene. So gratitude strengthens, strengthens our resilience. And this is where I tell you my story. When I was, um, during the pandemic, I was working for a company and the company didn't do very well. And it's understandable because during the pandemic, a lot of business were closing. Uh, you know, that all the situation that happened, um, even, you know, around the world uh, to do business uh, in between companies was difficult. Because you know, some of the companies were shut down. They couldn't ship the stuff to 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 their customers. Uh, people working from home and people sick. Okay, it was a, a chaos. So businesses, some of the businesses uh, went down with the pandemic. And of uh, at the end of 2020, the, the pandemic started at the beginning of 2020. 
I stayed with that company the whole year. Um, in the middle of the year, um, they uh, did a meeting and, and they said, oh, we need to reduce your salaries because we're struggling and we cannot um, pay a full, a full, your full salary. So instead of doing massive layoffs, they agreed to just lower our salary uh, 30%. They eliminated bonuses and so forth. However, the company continued to struggle. And at the end of 2020, I was laid off. And they said, I'm sorry. I mean, this is a decision that we're taking because of, um, you know, that we have to meet our, our accounts payables and we need to keep our, our the company healthy um, in order to tap into growth in the future. So those are the decisions that we need to make right now. And definitely when that happened, uh, the good thing is it, it wasn't my first laid off. I was laid off uh, two times before in the past. And I know that from having those experiences that this was just another uh, step in the process. I mean, uh, when, you, when you are laid off and, and don't have a job, then you sometimes you tap into worriness. Oh, am I going to be able to pay my bills? What am I gonna do uh, with the house that I, that I have to pay with all my responsibilities? Um, so in my case, um, I have kids, I have teenagers, um, I own a house. So there's a lot of payments that we needed to, to, to cover. Uh, but in the bottom, um, since I was practicing gratitude for so many years, I wasn't worried about you know, my situation. I was more, I understood the company was doing this because of uh, a way to survive and not because of me, not because I was a bad employee or didn't have uh, enough talent. So what I thought is, okay, this is not the opportunity to be with this company, but I'm gonna have another opportunity to be with another company in the future because I'm talented. So I tap into my gratitude and focus on all the things that were good in my life. I have talents, I have skills, I have experience. Um, I know all these companies, I know, know how they work. I mean, I, I've been working in this field for so many years. So I was hopeful about the future. And, and something that happens when you practice gratitude is that you envision, um, you imagine a better future. It's easy for you to imagine uh, the situation already solved and imagining a better future. And what happens with that envisioning is not magic, you know, it's not gonna happen. Uh, it's not a magic wand that is gonna pop off, pop up and, and solve everything, but it makes you, that your energy level is up, you feel motivated, enthusiastic, and also give you that expectation of, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to apply to all these jobs and something will come up. And it reduces your worriness and reduces your rumination about things that can go wrong. Um, and I was always um, hopeful that, okay, if in, I don't know, in one, three or two months, I couldn't find anything, there was a plan. I made a plan. I made plan A, B, C of, <laughs> to prepare, right? I, we sell the house and we move to something smaller uh, or we maybe move to another state that uh, the cost life is cheaper. So I made all these analysis and plans and, and definitely continue with my life and doing very important to continue doing the things that you love. Uh, I didn't stop anything that I loved, like meditation, like walking in nature, like hanging out with friends, like uh, preparing content for, for my Instagram account or, you know, doing contests of gratitude cards. So I was, I kept doing the things that I love because that fueled my energy. So that kept me going. And that also gave me a purpose, a meaning in life that, okay, I'm gonna be successful and I'm gonna find a job anytime soon. And definitely that was what happened. Um, I got laid off in, in December and I got a, a, a phone call out of the blue in January from a friend, that, a, a Pasco worker from another company that I worked in the past. And in a matter of a couple of months, I was, I got an offer and I started working for this company. 
And definitely I couldn't believe it because not only I found a good job, but also the benefits were great. The salary were, was even better than the previous company that I have. And, and also I'm finding a path inside this company to do what I love, which is uh, training in positive psychology. So definitely this is what happens when you tap into gratitude, when, when you become more resilient and, and just think about your failures or obstacles or setbacks as just part of a process and to tap into yourself, into your talents, okay? To be um, aware that if you have, if you ca could solve, you know, a lot of situations in your path, because look at what have you become today is because all your struggles you had in your past. So this is gonna be just another lesson for you to continue in your journey. So what do experts uh, say about gratitude? Okay, I have our Dr. Barbara Fredrickson. She's a, um, a scholar from University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Um, dedicated many years to studying positive emotion. Her theory suggests that when we experience positive emotion, such as gratitude, we broaden our, per our perspective and in the long term, we're able to build resources to deal with life's challenges, becoming more resilient. And that definitely could prove that many, many times. Dr. Talvin Shahar, another uh, dear scholar of us, uh, he says, when you appreciate the good, the good appreciates. Meaning that when you think of everything you can be thankful for, you feel better. As you feel better, you become more open to noticing and seeking positive experiences. And of course, you maintain your level of energy, which is at the end of the day, what um, prompts you to take action and move on. And Dr. Jody Spenza as well, he says, gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership. That is when we make gratitude and other higher emotions a habit, we're actually feeding our creations, that envisioning that I'm talking about. We are acting as if our ideal reality has already happened. And therefore you open yourself to receive. Enrique Corvera, that's another Spanish psychologist. He says, gratitude leads you to an awareness of abundance. That is when we see life through gratitude, we see opportunities in difficulties. We access situations and success is just a consequence of that state of consciousness. We persevere toward our goals. Gratitude opens up a spiritual dimension. It makes us see the extraordinary in the ordinary. The more you practice this, the more you will see the extraordinary in the ordinary. So how can we boost our gratitude superpower? Okay, these are recommendations. I mean, there are many. And at the end, I'm gonna give you some resources if you would like to learn more about it. But these are some of the most important that I have found. So boosting your gratitude superpower, you can immediately express gratitude to others when you receive a favor, highlighting their contribution, which encourages even more acts of kindness. So when you, um, when you are giving thanks and you highlight that person's uh, strength, for example, that also builds a good relationship and, and make that person, you elevate that person and make that person more uh, willing to be kind to other people. Also take a moment to appreciate and savor the good things that happen in your day. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be big things. It could be just, you know, taking the time to sip your, your favorite tea or to take a walk in nature or even be with your dog, with your pet. It could be a small things that happen during the day, but since we are always in a rush, we forget to pay attention and savor them. So the invitation here is take the moment, even if it's five minutes to appreciate that, to to pay attention to, to that experience and, and feel it, right? Feel the positive in, in that uh, experience. So if the more you practice, that will lead you to definitely perceive more 
of the code. Take advantage as well when you are in a family time, maybe having dinner, to discuss things to be grateful for. Encourage each person to participate. This creates a habit. And for I can give you an example on my family. Usually um, we do this over dinner and uh, we, of course, we, we say um, things that we're grateful for, but also I encourage them to, to talk about what they appreciate that, or the strengths they see or what they appreciate in the family. So for example, if it's my turn, I say, okay, what I appreciate about Ian is my song is this, what I appreciate about Sarah is this. So this as well brings the family together because they perceive that we are seeing them and that we are valuing what they bring to the family. Um, balance as well. Balance giving and receiving by being more open to receive other support and generosity. Sometimes we focus on being kind and generous to others, right? But when, when that happens on the opposite direction, we tend to, oh no, I don't need that. Don't worry, I don't need that. Or, you know, we, we feel that we, we, we shouldn't, right? And here is to invite you to balance that giving and receiving. We always also need support. And, you know, even when you think that you can do it yourself, and, but someone offers generosity, be open to receive. That's part of balancing as well and boosting your, your gratitude. Very important here, change for complaint to gratitude. This is, you know, is really difficult, uh, especially when we have you know, a lot of years of a pattern of talking about complaining, you know, that explanatory style that we're always talking to friends and family about things that went wrong and this happened to me. And, you know, when someone says something, you say, oh, me, my case is worse. This is what happened. So my invitation is to change from that complaint pattern to gratitude. Reflect on all your blessings. You know, if you do it in writing, even better. Appreciate your strengths and talents your close relationships, your positive experiences. There's a lot that you can you know, pay attention to and value and appreciate. Also, um, expand your gratitude by reframing a setback. Sometimes we think about challenges and setbacks as being permanent. And no, um, these are just temporary and they will pass. Everything will pass. So try to reframe that setback you know, before reacting to that setback or challenge or difficulty. Uh, stop, breathe, and analyze these less favorable situation by trying to see the positive side or the learning behind it. Sometimes we don't see the positive in a situation, but definitely a lesson or an opportunity there. You know, if we have a, for example, in, in the case of my family, we had a, my brother-in-law was diagnosed with cancer uh, two years ago and he went into treatment and, you know, it's difficult to see a uh, positive on that. But you can see what's the opportunity there for me to help, to support. And definitely we did that. We helped them through his treatment. We pay for oxygens for things. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't, he couldn't do, he couldn't uh, survive. He passed away um, like two months ago. But we did everything that we could. We were supportive all the time. So he's trying to see how can this situation, you can tap into gratitude. And, you know, instead of just saying, you know, focused on the difficulty and why this happened and finding, you know, that rumination around the, the problem is an invitation to stop, analyze, take an observer role, and see how can you help this situation to become better. Also, you can boost your gratitude superpower by increasing experiential consumption. It has been um, proven by a research that spending money on experiences rather than things encourages the experience of gratitude. Also think about that special person 
that has contributed in your life. There might be a couple, there might be, there might be many. So write a gratitude letter and read it out loud to that person or send it to that person. You can boost gratitude as well by being more aware of your mental traps, such as ruminating about failures or problems. So the more attention you pay, the better you become at disrupting these unhealthy patterns. Okay, you can be always um, paying attention to if you are constantly, for example, thinking about problems or um, ruminating about regrets um, and interrupt and maybe do an activity that feels good for you or tap into learning something that you love, uh, things like that. Because th those patterns, they, they won't help you solve the situation because they narrow your focus, remember. Positivity widens your focus and then you are able to tap into a solution maybe faster. You can also boost your gratitude superpower when success, uh, success comes to you or a loved one. Really take the time to celebrate it with a grateful heart. Take that time to enjoy and talk about that accomplishment and, and give it, the, and give it uh, the necessary attention. You can journal about the best in your life as well. Journaling is, is very good for, for our brains. Uh, the best people, you can journal about what's the best people in your life, the best things, the best moments, the best activities. Feel grateful for them. And also you can perform a gratitude challenge. I would say for 21 days, but you can do a smaller days like seven days or, or 12 days. Encourage your family to use a board or a jar and get together to read the notes. Okay, that also brings the family together. So now I'm gonna show you some benefits of gratitude. Um, definitely the benefits, the, the main benefit that I see is that rewires your brain by creating the habit of noticing the good. Remember when, when I talked about your brain building those neural pathways. So when you are noticing the good, when you're noticing the positive in your day, um, that those neural pathways are getting stronger. So your brain is being rewired for that. And if you keep practicing, you keep practicing. I mean, you could, it could take a few months, but it, it will be a moment that you, it's, gonna, it's very easy for you to notice the good. Also, in, uh, gratitude improves our sense of self-worth. Because when you see the life, uh, see a life full of good things, you open yourself to receive more. And also has a, a benefit um, in our health. It helps reduce stress, depression, and anxiety, which positively impacts our health. Also, gratitude increases the feeling of well-being in both ways, the person that feels the gratitude and that person that receives it. It reinforces as well your self-esteem of others because you inspire them to contribute, to continue being kind to, other, to others. So it's like a ripple effect. And grateful people as well have better moods and, and are more satisfied with life overall. Sometimes when you practice and you train the skill of gratitude, you feel gratitude um, every day by, you know, everything that happened in your day that you're paying attention, um, but it doesn't have to happen something really big or, you know, a major accomplishment or a major uh, promotion or something big for you to feel grateful with. Because this is, I, I see it as drops, a uh, drop of water when, when you, feel those uh, micro moments of positivity in your day, it's like you're filling your glass of positivity. So the more that glass is full, the better you will feel and the more energy you will have. Gratitude also facilitates the enjoyment of the present moment because for you to you know, notice what is good around you, you need to pay attention. And, and that's definitely mindfulness uh, right there. 
we are, um, you know, being more uh, attentive to the present moment to, to be more aware of the positives. Also, gratitude improves relationships by recognizing the other and its positive impact in our lives. And after you practice gratitude, you start like a virtuous cycle in your mind that influence how you think and see the world. That creates like an upward spiral of happiness by tapping into gratitude several times in the day. This is my favorite, favorite quote from Dr. Robert Holden. He says, the miracle of gratitude is that it shifts your perception to such an extent that it changes the world you see. Because your brain is going to be focused more on the good, on the positives. Again, doesn't mean you're going to ignore what is not as positive or what is not going well. But you will also tap into what is going right or what is positive around you. And, and that gives you the, the resiliency to tackle the other. This is some um, recommended products for, for practicing gratitude. Uh, this is the book that I mentioned to you about um, the Greater Good Science Center that's uh, from the University of California. It's the Gratitude Project that was recently released. Of course, from Dr. Robert Emmons, we have a, a few books from him. The Little Book of Gratitude is excellent and it's very easy to read, very, very short. Uh, he also has another book, Gratitude Works, have the, the Gratitude Blueprint and the Resilience Project. I also recommend some podcasts, um, the Gratitude Cafe, the Gratitude Podcast, uh, the Daily Gratitude Minute, Attitude of Gratitude. Some of them are available in Spotify or, or also in, in Apple podcast. This is a, a product from, from, our, from one of our um, classmates and, and, and well-being institute by Natalie Horner. She, she produced um, a gratitude journal, gifts us and, and postcards. And I think you have seen her present already as well on gratitude. It's a beautiful product as well. And I have the, a car practice, uh, which I call my gift of gratitude. This is um, a practice I created uh, in 2019. And it's a, a car deck with 52 cars. And I'm gonna read uh, one from the deck in a minute. Um, that helps you create that awareness of what to be grateful for. And of course, makes you um, feel, find more happiness in the little thing. And, and get that daily inspiration inspiration that we sometimes need to, to tap into gratitude. Um, there has a journal as well for, for you to write your own um, reflections. Uh, and right now I have a 30% uh, discount for November and December in Amazon. So now uh, I'm gonna do a contest for, I'm gonna give away three gratitude kits. But before I do that, I wanted to, I don't know, Caroline, if you want to check the chat, but I wanted to read one of the cards. This is oh, how the cards look like. I love your deck. I have one myself. Um, let's see, we have, well, of course, Phoebe commented that Seligman's research writer expressed the specific actions that a person has done that you are grateful for in order to increase the benefits of gratitude when saying or writing thank you. So, no. And uh, uh, Rabbi Deb is on. She'll be back for December 21st for our gratitude panel. And we will um, get to hear about her. And Natalie will be with us on 1221 for a gratitude panel as well. So. Um, and Bonnie said, everyone's life and attitude to what we all knew before COVID has changed or affect us all in so many different ways. We now must move forward. 
-hmm. and be as positive as we can be careful, cautious, and one day at a time. Look at what we have and not what we don't. Emotionally, I practice that the best I can, and I feel quite lucky. Beautiful, Beautiful everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I pick from the deck. This is a, the deck in English. The purple box. I pick this car, which is, you know, it has to do with what we're doing today. It says, I am grateful for my community. Humans are made to live and work with others in communities where we all can flourish. We are social beings that have evolved to exist within communities where we can collaborate with each other. Communities are important because they provide a sense of belonging and contribute to foster positive relationships, a sense of purpose and accomplishment when we achieve common goals. All of these being important elements to increase the sense of well-being. Communities also provide support and guidance to members and contribute to life satisfaction when members engage in performing good deeds together. There are many communities that allow people to feel more engaged and connected. Think about the ones you belong and all the good things you have experienced together. Appreciate and value the time you spend contributing to something great. And I think that's what GCC does. We have a winner. A oh, really One winner. So so far, um, Joanne Edgar at number seventeen. Excellent. Oh, I should type a number. <laughs> and I believe you have two more decks, correct? Yes. All right, everyone. Two more chances. Numbers one through twenty. Go ahead and uh, vote again if you'd like. Yes, use the chat. We have a winner. It is, hang on one second, hang on. I think it's, uh, wait. <laughs> Judy, I think, where are you? Hang on. Who? It is the number two. Uh -huh. And I believe we had a two in there. Yes. Judy Field. Judy Field. Okay, so Joanne Edgar and Judy Fields so far. And what you're gonna do is send your, uh, directly to Yaro, your address so she can mail that to you. Mm -hmm. You can put it in the chat. Yaro, is it best for yeah, that? Yeah, I'm putting it in the chat. Mm -hmm. And we have one more card deck. Go ahead and feel free to vote again, everyone. Okay. Go ahead and you are welcome to vote mm -hmm. again. Bobby. I love this number. It <laughs> is a number that uh, was my volleyball number. <laughs> sometimes, I'll give you a hint, sometimes people say it's unlucky because it's Friday, the... If it falls on a Friday, this number. 13. Who, who wrote it? Did 13. you write it? Dear Rose, 13, 13, 13. Okay, and Lisa, Lisa Buxbaum, was that you? Who said that? Who was the first? Gloria, I said, I don't know. Gloria, you were the one that said it? All right, yeah. I think you win. Put your, please contact, uh, Yaro, put your, uh, at the email there, which is, I think you put it. I wrote, I wrote it there, info at humanlypositive.com. Yeah, so much fun. How? Yeah. I so before we things. close, right, before we close, I want to give you this um, quote from Tal Ben Shahar that basically wraps it all up. It said, he says, good and bad things happen to all of us. However, what we decide to focus on the most determines how happy we are. When we focus on the negative, we create a reality where the negative is reinforced and the positive is weakened. When we focus on the positive, we create a better reality where the positive comes first. 
this is what gratitude does. Beautiful. Dr. Alvin Shahar. Beautiful. And definitely, thank you for having me and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Yaro. Oh my goodness, what an amazing positive psychology hour, everyone. Don't you agree? I am reminded to like leash that negativity bias and appreciate the good because the good appreciates. And you know what I noticed, Yaro, and I wonder what you do when you're, when I'm not feeling well, if I'm a little under the weather, I notice that negativity bias like just jumps right in there. Do you mm -hmm. notice that too when we're yes. feeling a little under the weather? We have, we have to be attentive of that, you know, of those patterns that we tend to fall onto and, and intervene, you know, we, yeah. you can intervene by, you know, interrupting that with, you know, something else, something that you like, okay, let me take a walk, let me read a book, let me do something that, you know, interrupts that pattern. And what do you do when you're in the corporate setting, because you do so much at mm -hmm. work, when one of your colleagues starts to complain about another colleague? Yes, we have a lot of those cases. <laughs> uh, and in fact, we had, a, I just finished a, one of the positive psychology um, coaching with my team, uh, it's 25 people. And the majority of them were saying, yeah, but you know, how can we, we cannot change the other person. How can we make them do understand what we want? Um, so definitely I, uh, what I explain is that we need to tap into compassion because, uh, and I, I always tell them this story, right? There was a lady driving, you know, the other day and there was a car in front of her that was, you know, signaling to turn and didn't turn, was, you know, speeding up and slowing down. And, and the, this lady was almost uh, tapping into frustration, but then she noticed a label in the car, a sticker that said, learner driver, please be patient. So if she wouldn't seen that, she would have been, you know, very frustrated and maybe honk or try to pass it. But since she saw that label, she was okay. Let me be patient and, you know, try to, 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 to explore or, or be, be more calm. And the thing is that not everybody has a label explaining their struggles. And, and if we think about it, we all, we all were there in, in the past. We, we at some point were an inexperienced driver, right? At some point, um, we were also frustrated with someone else and, and it's trying to see you in that person, try to have the empathy of the situation and understand their point of view, right? And, and be, you know, use compassion to try to understand and have, open a dialogue there um, before you just get frustrated and, and I don't know what to do and escalate, right? Because I think everybody's going to, is, is having a struggle and we don't know, right? And it might be if we open the channel uh, and an empathetic listening, right, channel, it might be that that person feels uh, valued and feels heard and, and maybe the situation changes just by that. And so that's what we're practicing. Right. You weren't always this grateful, were you? Uh, no. Uh, well, I, I started being more grateful after I started, right, positive yeah. psychology. But in the past, I, I mean, I've been always being positive and looking for the good. It was like maybe my genes. Yeah. Uh, but definitely when I learned all of this, now I, I can control better and interrupt those patterns, which is very important. And I, the only reason I ask that is just because I think that, you know, those of you are, who are out there that feel like, oh, you know, I just, this seems like it's challenging for me. It's not about being perfect, right, Yaro? It's not about, um, it's about a practice, right? It happens. Yeah. And uh, of course, you have uh, noticed in your own life, you've said to me before, how much this practice has developed and even changed you and, and, and uh, increased your resilience, yeah? Yes, definitely, definitely. So, so there is hope is what I'm saying. You know, you don't have to be, you might be a, you don't have to be a superhuman to have 
a great gratitude practice and also find that it actually changes you. And I wanted to thank you, Yaro, as always, for just coming in at the right time. I mean, don't everybody else, do you feel like I do? Like I just needed this infusion of gratitude (laughs) right before Thanksgiving to just give me, you know, ground me in that, that, oh yeah, that's right. I really do have an impact (laughs) on my thoughts and I, you know, strength spot people. And as I go into these holiday conversations with folks at the dinner table, and of course we have, you're going to see people that you might haven't, haven't seen in a while. And there's all this different political views to just really focus everything on what we appreciate about one another. Right. Yes. Yeah. Next week, everyone, our online positive psychology is human connection uh, is more critical than ever. And Catherine Libonet is going to be here. She's going to be talking about how human connection continues to be a challenge, building right off of what Yaro has been speaking about. Many of us are still Zooming, wearing masks, keeping our social distance, and gathering with only a select few. Yet our bodies are really designed to be with one another. So how do we how do we reconcile that as we come to towards the end of the year, the beginning of December? is just right around the corner and then we'll be at the top of you know 2022 Yaro do you have any special plans for 2022 <laughs> up something yes I, I I heard I'm, I'm I'm copying your addresses I heard that um in the company that I'm working for they're having a, a global meeting in uni so for the first time in June I will travel to Germany wow yeah. All right. Well, for those of you that are traveling this holiday, um, s- safely, safe travel to all of you. We wish you well. And feel free to um, unmute and thank Yaro yourselves for. Thank you for your comments. Thank thank you. I'm, I'm so reading the chat. Much. Thank <laughs> you very much for your comments. Thank you. Thank you so Happy much. Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you, Yaro. Happy Thanksgiving, thank everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. 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 Bye.